Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial. Uh, today we are going to take a look at creating something like this, uh, what you might typically see on a subway system or light rail system, basically a very uh, not so realistic map that tells the riders of the transit system what stop they need to get off at. So you've probably all seen these either at a subway or train station or if you have never been to a subway or train station, presumably uh, you've seen something similar just via images and things like that. Now, this is actually a really easy effect to create and it doesn't take that much effort. And without, I mean, probably within 20 or 30 minutes, I was able to create something like this. So we have, you know, your green line, purple line and yellow line. Each has uh, different routes um, and things like that. And then, um, they all connect at the same station. So you can see here this uh, Chilton station uh, on the green line. We have Chilton here on the purple line, and then we have Chilton here on the yellow line. And so all of these do connect through a station. Um, that was something I did, you know, in addition, just to kind of make it seem more realistic. But for the effect that we're going to create today, I think we'll probably just uh, start with this and do uh, just really quickly do a. Um, I don't know, like a purple or blue line or something like that. So let's go ahead and create a new document. So go to File, New, or hit Control or Command N. Uh, and once we get this new document set up, all you need to do is go to this Profile section right here. And if you click that drop down, you can see you get a bunch of stuff. We want to be on Print because that's, generally speaking, what you'll want. Uh, you could do Web if you're going to be doing work that will be displayed on the Web. But we'll just keep it on Print for right now. The other thing is if you go to size, you can see I'm already selected at letter. That's just your standard uh, US size 8.5 by 11. If you click that, um, it switches this to points. So 612 points and 792 points. Um, you can change that over to inches if you prefer. And you can see that we have our 8.5 by 11. Um, I tend to work in points. I don't know why honestly have no clue. But you can pick whatever you want. Um, if you're more comfortable with inches, go for it. Perhaps you are in a metric based country and you want to use millimeters and centimeters. Um, if you're comfortable with pixels, picos or points, whatever you want to use, it's um, up to you. Um, and we don't need any bleeds for this because uh, we're just going to be creating some stuff. So go ahead and click OK. And we are presented with this new document. So the first thing that I want to do is just start creating uh, kind of a line. So I use the pen tool. You could use uh, the line tool and kind of draw it out with the line tool. But uh, I tend to use the pen tool because it um, keeps one continuous line going the whole, the whole way. So uh, one quick tip that uh, is applicable to this scenario is, I don't know if you have noticed, but we'll go back to our example here. The lines on subway maps tend to always be either 90 degrees, um, 90 degree turns or 45 degree turns. And you can achieve that effect um, relatively easily by holding down the shift key. So I can click and drag and let's say I want the, uh, the line to do something like down, kind of over and down. If I click here, I can go down and you can see I have this green line that kind of tells me, okay, yep, you're going straight. Good, good job. Keep going. So we can click here and that's a straight line. But now let's say I want to come over here somewhere and click. And then I can click right here. That actually looks okay. It doesn't look bad at all. But if you want to be precise uh, and you are as concerned about being precise as I am, uh, you can click on the pen tool here uh, and hold down the shift key. And this will constrain your uh, lines to exact uh, either 90 or 45 degree um, or the other degree there. I don't remember it. Um, 180, I think. Anyways, so you can see what happens. You can click here and here, no problem. And let's say I want to click right here somewhere. You can see what happens. I haven't let go of shift or my mouse button yet. And you can see that it doesn't place that point where my pen tool was, it places it at the closest point that will give me the uh, appropriate angle. Um, so then you can click down at the bottom and you're good to go. So that's just a handy tip uh, that can help with creating things like that. So 
What you want to do now is go up to this right here, the stroke section, and you want to change one point to something like four. Um, and actually, I'll go even a little bit higher. Let's try six. Now, for this example, 10 works. It depends on how zoomed in you are when you're creating it, um, but this looks good. So again, fully zoomed out, eight and a half by 11 document, about 10 points looks just fine. All right, so we've created our line. Um, that's great. Now what we need to do is give it a color. Um, well, I think we said, I don't know, let's do, let's do the blue line, why not? So over in this section right here, you can see this little white box with a red X through it. We actually wanna keep that. You can see what happens if I make it blue, we get this funky uh, fill going on. We don't want that at all. So um, we'll go back to the no, no color symbol here. What we wanna do is click on this black stroke color behind it and you can see it jump to the front. Now, when we change the color, we'll be able to affect the stroke color and you can see we get this nice blue effect. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go a little bit lighter and I just double click on this to open up this color picker here. Okay, that looks, actually I liked it better the other way. We're gonna stick with this. <laughs> um, okay, so now the only thing we have to do is add a few details like the uh, stations. We also need to add the station names. And one other thing we need to add is if you look at this line right here, it's a very, whoops, I clicked it by accident. Uh, it's a very sharp corner right here. And if you look at the original example, we've got this nice curved line. So what we need to do is select the stroke and go to effect, stylize, and rounded corners. All right, what this allows us to do is select a radius in points. Uh, we can preview that right here uh, as to how much curvature will be on these lines. So if I bump this up to something like 20, you can see it gets even more. Let's do something crazy like 200. Whoa, that's insane. That's really curved. So um, you can play with this however you want. I think that 20 looked just fine. And again, like the stroke width will change depending on your dimensions, so will the number of um, points you want these curves to be. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our 20 point curves here. All we need to do now is add the stops along the line. So we'll go over here to our circle tool. Now, if you do not see the circle tool, that's not a problem. It's probably hidden underneath the rectangle tool. And to get it to come out, you just have to click and hold your mouse right on the rectangle and you'll see this nice drop down menu. Just click the ellipse tool or you can click L on the keyboard. And now in order to draw a circle, um, I'll zoom in just a little bit. I'm just hitting control or command and the plus key on the keyboard. And then uh, once you're zoomed in, in order to get this little hand tool so you can move around like this, all you have to do is click space, the space bar and your mouse will turn into a little hand. You can move it around and let go of the space bar and you go back to the, the normal selection tool. Um, okay, so we will select the ellipse tool here and you can see this little green line appears telling me I'm exactly in the center of the stroke and the anchor point appears telling me I'm exactly at the very end. So all I'll do is I'll click and drag out and you can see I get a circle, but that doesn't look quite where it needs to be at all. So you need to hold down two keys while you're doing this. One is the shift key, and that will make sure that it stays a perfect circle, no matter how big it gets. The other key that you want to use is the alt or option key, alt on the PC, option on the Mac. And this is gonna allow you to scale from the center. So watch what happens when I click it. Oh, look at that. So now I'm scaling it from the center and the circle will always be perfectly lined up with our uh, blue line. So something like this is probably just fine. Um, now this is ridiculously out of proportion, but we can fix that pretty easily. What you wanna do is go down here and you want to make sure that the blue, instead of being a 10 point stroke, we'll probably want it to be like a five. Yeah, five looks good. And the other thing that we wanna do is see how this blue line kind of comes up and you can see it behind the circle. So we wanna select the circle 
and go over to the what is currently a no color, the fill, and we want to change that over to the same color blue. Or no, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> the, we want to change it to, I guess you could leave it blue if you wanted to, but uh, we want to change it to white. And that'll give you that classic um, subway stop look. Again, just hitting control or command and the minus key to zoom out. We can now uh, click this here, holding the option or alt key, we get this little double arrow and that allows us to click it and drag and make a copy of it. So I like to have just one of these copies off to the side and I'm going to hit control, uh, sorry, alt or option again and drag it down. And now with the second circle, I'm going to change it to a three point stroke. Actually, I'll go as low as a two point stroke for that. Okay. And I'll make it just a little bit smaller. So what I've done here is created the main station symbol and the smaller station symbol. So maybe this is just a, a quick little stop, whereas this is a big like intersection where you can change to another line or something of that sort. So we're just going to plop a few of these down. So again, select it here, holding the option or alt key. We just click it and drag it over and just line it up as we go. Just like so. And now we're down towards the end. So we want to make sure we grab this bigger one again and we just click it and drag it down. And again, line it right up with the anchor point. So it's right at the end. And we don't need these anymore. Okay, so we are, we're getting there. This is looking pretty good. Um, this is really all that I have uh, as far as the tutorial is concerned. Um, if you uh, select the type tool, of course, you can uh, click somewhere in here and type, let's do Grand Central Station for some reason. Uh, we'll change this type to something else that is not Myriad Pro. Not that there's anything wrong with Myriad Pro. Um, let's just zoom in a little bit. This works. All right, so we've got our Grand Central Station here. And you can just, again, same function, you just hold Alt or Option, click it and drag it down, and you're good to go. Now, as you may have noticed in this particular example, the text, the text boxes are rotated. Um, that's very simple to do as well. You can just click on the text box, and you'll see this, uh, these little bounding boxes that allow you to make it bigger or smaller. What you want to do is not do that, because that looks, wow, that looks pretty bad. Um, if you go a little bit further out, you'll see your arrow becomes this kind of curved double arrow and that will allow you to rotate the text. Now, if you want to make it all identical, you can use the same trick we used before by holding the shift key and it will only rotate in uh, increments of 45 degrees. So that way it'll never, um, you can rotate this one and then you can rotate this one and you know that they'll be the exact same. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much this tutorial. Um, I know it uh, wasn't anything, let's get this back, that looks better. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I know that it wasn't anything too crazy, um, pretty straightforward, mainly just wanted to focus on creating this kind of curved line here um, based on a stroke. And the other thing is, um, I showed you this earlier. It's very simple to do this. You just take, you know, cop once you get this set up, you just copy and paste this into a document. This is just a rectangle with a green fill, white text on top of it, and then um, you've got your little info box here. If we zoom in, you can see, you know, trains run from 550. This is just made up stuff, by the way. I didn't use any particular, um, <laughs> any particular train that I based this on, like the, an actual system, but just some information for the passengers. This was actually designed as part of a pamphlet, like a handout that people would get when they purchase tickets. But um, yeah, so uh, hopefully you got something out of this tutorial. Hopefully it was helpful. If you have any uh, information, suggestions, or things like that uh, related to Illustrator or just anything really, I'd be happy to hear them. So please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Um, and yeah, 
Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.